Hey guys, you're watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're building a dental practice, one of the questions you have is how do I get this thing running so it doesn't run me? So I've got Scott Luna on today from Breakaway Practice and he's gonna show you how you can run a practice instead of it running you and you can do this in a half hour a day. So don't miss this. Do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show. We are crazy grateful that you guys are watching today and um, thank you again for all of your suggestions and thank you for following us on iTunes now. Over 16,000 followers on Facebook growing every single day and a quarter million views a week uh, and over 6,000 of you have found us on iTunes. So um, just crazy, crazy grateful and we're gonna keep bringing the things that you guys wanna see and today is no exception. So I got my good friend, Dr. Scott Luna from Breakaway Practice on today and you're gonna see he is brilliant with a lot of these concepts. So do, before we get started, couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you're watching the live feed, you have a question, please add it to the feed and I'll ask Scott directly and we'll get the answer straight from him. Also, if you're watching these later on, which we watch the metrics and it looks like some of you are watching this well into the evenings or a couple days later, continue to add your questions to the feed and we'll make sure we get you the right answers to some of the questions you have because we want you to get the most out of this. Now, my guest today, I'm just gonna, some of you have already heard this story, but I'm gonna repeat it for those of you that haven't. Um, I had heard about Dr. Scott Luna years ago from uh, Dr. Eric Jones and I thought, he said, you gotta go. And I'm like, oh gosh, I. What is it? He says, it's just awesome. Just go. So I called uh, Dr. Luna. I said, hey, can I come down? You were gracious enough to say, hey, look, come on down. And at that time, you were doing a whole series of courses called Breakaway Practice. And now you've got even more courses now and you've kind of separated them. But after I, after those couple days, I thought to myself, this is some of the best information I have ever seen. I walked away with a manual that was this big, Tons of great information uh, and super, super applicable. And you're just an excellent educator. Now, Scott, if people don't know you or haven't heard about you or don't know your story, can you share with us a little bit about who you are and what Breakaway Practice is? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on again. Um, yeah, my name is Scott Luna and I'm a dentist by training. Um, I started a practice right out of school and it grew to, uh, to four million within a couple of years. Um, I opened uh, two more locations as well. And within those first four years of being a dentist, we had eight to nine million dollars revenue. We had 10 dentists. And that all sounds great and wonderful. But to be a new grad and to be seeing 700 new patients a month within three practices and managing associates and managing a team of 90, um, I went through a lot of troubles. I learned from my big mistakes and I gained Kind of a valuable level of experience. I learned how to schedule better, how to present finances better, how to save money on marketing, how to build better offices, how to be a CEO. And uh, those lessons came from painful moments, mm -hmm. uh, but those lessons form the foundation of what has now been built and become something much different, much greater, uh, where now my company, Breakaway Practice, um, helps dentists build new startups across the country. We've helped build 80 in the last three years. We help run practices, whether it's their phones, the billing, the insurance, the marketing, the IT. There's 364 of those across the country. And we also have these really intense kind of boot camp-esque business training seminars, these events. And you went to one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are, in essence, kind of the three main things we do. And it's all based on learning from um, mistakes, learning from successes, having a large sample size of practices to understand the best way to resubmit a claim, the best narrative, the best thing to say on the phone, 
that is in essence what we've become a um, kind of a collaboration of all the best practices in running a dental office scaled across the country yeah absolutely and we we're gonna post a link into the show notes so you'll be able to see it and check it out now scott this is a super hot topic in how you run a dental practice and can you just tell us why this is such a hot topic because you you are you know this as a dentist you can spend all your time doing the dentistry and you have to have a balance of both of them yeah that's right um you know what annoys me is when i think about those dentists that have worked in their practice for 20 or 30 years and they sell their practice to some corporate chain and within six months that practice is way more profitable much bigger much better on paper Mm-hmm. Why is it that the corporate chain, without even knowing the patients, was able to make that practice successful in a short amount of time, yet this dentist owner who cultivated the baby of the practice for 20, 30 years couldn't? Mm-hmm. And when we look at that and we say, well, there's these steps in place, like running a better company, right? The, these 10 or 20 knobs that we have to turn the right way in our practice to get the results we want. The dentist wasn't turning them the right way. The dentist wasn't doing those relatively straightforward things they got to do to run the practice. Instead, the practice was running the dentist Mm -hmm. because the dentist would show up, cut teeth, try to stay on schedule, try to deal with staff drama, try to just make it through the end of the day, go home, crash, watch Netflix, recover, go to bed, wake up the next day, show up back to work and cut teeth. Right. And in that whole schedule, there was actually no time spent running the company. Mm-hmm. And so embezzlement creeps in, wasteful spending creeps in, the lack of case acceptance creeps in, the bad collection policies creep in, and the dentist can't manage it. They don't know. They just feel the pressure. Mm-hmm. They're working hard, but they're not making as much money as they think they could. And then they sell and someone else actually runs the company and immediately makes more money. That's why this is a hot topic. We need to be the ones running the company and not being the ones that are being run by the company. Um, you know, that's why I think a lot of dentists want to just get out of the chair right. because they're so bogged down with being in it because no one's correcting the company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the thing I like about you have a very systematic approach to almost every challenge in dentistry. Now you have a series of daily, weekly, and quarterly things that you do, or you even train other dentists to do through breakaway practice. Can you walk us through the thought process and how that all works? Yeah. So, um, I am not a guy that likes to talk about the big picture and get excited and rah, rah, and then get home and do the same old crap. Right. Because we don't know how to do the big picture. I'm actually the guy that's like the operator, very detailed. I, I want to know, take these five steps, and then I get this big picture result. Like, I'm, I'm all about the steps. Mm-hmm. If I think about running a practice better, that obviously takes work. But I want to know what work, Right. And to run a practice better, what work does it take? Well, that work that it takes is usually not a one-time activity, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's usually an ongoing habit. A one-time activity might be going to a seminar, learning something, going back to the practice, doing it, and a week later it's not done and we're, we're level zero again, right? Or another example, one-time activity, bring in a consultant who kind of gets one thing done, they leave, and then it's not done anymore because the consultant didn't make it a habit, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to know, okay, what are the things that have to be done to run a practice and how do I make them into a habit? Right. And so what are the things that have to be done? Well, we have to do things like audit certain processes, audit the charts to make sure we have good scheduling, good treatment planning, uh, HIPAA consent, Uh, HIPAA form sign, consent form sign, did we schedule it properly, right? We have to audit our facility. Are the light bulbs working? Is the coffee bar stocked? We have to audit um, or we have to do other daily tasks. Like we have to have morning huddles. We have to review our adjustments, our write-offs, right? These are proper things that have to be done. We have to have weekly meetings. We have to calculate bonus plans maybe weekly. We have to have 
monthly meetings with our CPA, monthly meetings to review our operational numbers to see if anything's broken. These are all steps that a CEO has to do. Mm -hmm. And it sounds daunting, mm -hmm. but the key is to make it into a simplified habit. And so my philosophy around managing the practice is taking a long list of every CEO task that has to be done and turning it into a daily, weekly, or monthly habit that's written down mm -hmm. so that I don't have to remember, I don't have to think about it. Like it's always just right there written down, right? Right. The habit. And then, of course, I have to have the time to do the habits that make me a good CEO. So I have to schedule time. Like I'm, I schedule a crown prep. I schedule CEO time so I can do the simple things that make big impacts in the practice. That's kind of our general philosophy around it. Right. Now, give us an example. Now, there's a couple things. I want to go back to this. You use the word audit, and you've described the word audit better than anybody I know. You're a big fan of auditing, you know, whether it be the processes, the checklist, and can you describe, now I'm going to paraphrase what you said, because I'm trying to remember what you said. You said, people have to be audited, not because they don't know how to do it. It's just that there's no, there isn't an audit or system in check place. There's no consequences for not doing it. Something like that. Can you describe, because as a dentist, I might be watching this going audit. Oh gosh, I don't want to audit anything. But why is that so important what you just shared? Yeah, so auditing is one of the most powerful ways of having lasting change in a company. Um, because what it does is it brings a gentle, consistent amount of focus and accountability to whatever's being audited. Right. So, for example, if, if I want to make sure that every patient has a consent form signed, something as simple as that, if I don't look, if I don't audit, then shockingly, maybe to some, a ton of consent forms don't get signed. Right. But if I actually look at one patient a day to check to see if there's a consent form signed, and when there's not, I walk right up to my dental assistant and say, oh, we didn't get a consent form here. It doesn't take very many days for the dental assistant to know I'm looking, and then she is reminded and held accountable to get it done. Right. She sees me performing an audit and the act of me performing an audit reminds her every day to do the things I audit. Mm -hmm. And that is how we get lasting change. It's also how we have focus. You see, when we audit, let's say something crazy. Let's say I have to audit 50 things a day, something crazy, right? 50. If each thing takes 10 seconds Okay, we're talking about 5,000 seconds, mm -hmm. right? So what is that? I don't know, 10 minutes, okay? So I, I audit 50 things a day in 10 minutes. That means that those 50 things, I only think about for 10 minutes. And after the audit, I have maybe a list of three or four that I go address. Mm -hmm. Think about what that does to my psyche as an owner of a company. Without auditing, I am worried about 50 things. And when there's decay in any one of those things, because I'm not looking, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right. and bigger until I have a blowout. Mm -hmm. But instead, if I audit, I don't think about 50 things. I, I don't even think about the audit until I actually sit down to do it. So all day long, I'm not worried about consent forms. I'm not worried about the darn restrooms being clean or not. I'm not worried about financial policies. I'm only worried. I'm only looking at it for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then I find three things that I need to address. And now I'm just focused on three. And guess what? There's incipient decay in those three. It's not blown out, right? Because I catch it early. So it's, it takes so much stress away. And we're proactively running the company because I've written it down, because I've actually like organized the steps uh, on paper, not in my head, but on paper. 
Right. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. P- perfect sense. And then take us into these because these daily, weekly, quarterly habits. Um, take us into that and give us an example and how all that works. And then also too, as a dentist, I might be watching this saying, "Look, I'm just going to step o- step over this, Scott, and I'm just going to hire an office manager." And you can't do that until you've mastered this yourself, right? Is that am I correct in assuming that? Yeah. So let me address office manager first, and then I'll give you a bunch of examples. Okay. Um, office manager. The ideal way to have an office manager is to hand someone the list of tasks that I have to do as a CEO, Mm -hmm. hand them some of those things, and now they're doing them, Mm -hmm. right? Because our intention on having an office manager, I think most of us, is that that office manager is hired to take things off of our plate so that we can focus on other things, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but what I see normally is a dentist hires an office manager and they say, congratulations, you're office manager. And the dentist is thinking, oh, they're going to do a bunch of work for me. Okay. But the office manager wasn't given any sort of list of things. So the office manager thinks, oh, I'm the boss, mm-hmm. right? So now all we've done is we've paid someone more and given them this entitlement of being boss to everyone else, but they don't actually take work off of our plate. Right. So to do that properly, we have to know, here's all the CEO tasks. And then we say, okay, office managers need to do this. Right. So you're now my office manager. You make more money and you do everything you currently do. Plus you do these things. Mm-hmm. Right? We can't do that handoff of duties until we've actually defined the duties. What are right. they? Are they daily? Are they weekly? Are they monthly? Are they quarterly? What are they? Mm-hmm. That's where we have to start. Right. So so that brings us to, okay, what are the examples, right? What are the examples of these daily tasks? Um, So I'll go over some of them. Okay. Uh, One example is we audit one chart a day. And in that chart, we audit, uh, we as in the CEO, okay, so I'll just say I as a dentist, the CEO, I audit HIPAA, health history, consent forms, Financial arrangements. Did we collect the prepayment correctly? Did we schedule a recall? Did we do full mouth probing? Did we phase a treatment plan? Did we post the procedures as complete? Do we have clinical notes? Mm-hmm. Right. These examples, right? I just named 10 things, but those 10 things take like a minute. Right. Looking in a chart. And we look, yep, 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 yep. No. No, we did not post the procedures complete. Mm-hmm. So then anytime we have a no, I write it down. <laughs> Literally my own. Well, hold on one second. You might get a kick out of this. I love it. So my company is very complicated. Imagine mm-hmm. running 364 offices. Here's my monthly audit. Once a month. I don't know. It's 200 pages long. Gives me all. It's like, a, it's like 200 pages of x-rays. Mm-hmm. So I can see if there's any decay anywhere. Right. right. And from this, oh, we got to know, comes a task. Mm-hmm. I'm the CEO. I audit. In this example, I gave you 10 things in a chart. I get a no. That creates a task. And my task goes on my task list. Okay. And my task list consists of things I do and things I have delegated to someone else. Love it. Not until I've done it do I cross it out. And not until I've verified someone else did it do I cross it off the delegated side. Okay. So I do my 10 things in a chart audit. It takes me a minute. I get a no on something. I write it down. Talk to Sarah about this patient not having a procedure complete. Okay. okay. That's a chart audit. Then next, as a CEO, I need to make sure my facility is in working order. I don't want patients walking into a dirty restroom or we don't have paper towels over here or we don't have a coffee bar stocked. So I do a facility audit. So I go, takes me like two minutes. I walk through the facility at a random time of the day, maybe, or during time I've blocked out. And I audit things like, is the music on or the beverage bar stocked? Are things clean? Are we, are we, um, are we running sterilization properly? Um, then I also check things while I'm walking around. Are my hygienists taking intraoral images? Is my treatment coordinator using the financial option form? Do patients have pillows and blankets? Mm-hmm. See, so I'm walking through the facility. 
I can't pull a report in Dentrix that tells me if patients have a pillow, right? <laughs> so I have to walk around and see if they do. Yeah. And it sounds dumb, but how else would I ensure that my patient experience is consistently good right. if I don't look? Right. So that's a facility audit. That's an example of a daily task. Another example of daily tasks are things like um, logging into, you've talked about this company, we use them too, logging into Dental Intel and checking mm -hmm. certain numbers. Um, also having a morning huddle, um, uh, looking at the write-off and adjustments report to make sure everything looks normal, yeah. uh, making sure that we balance the day on the deposits. And then the last daily thing is making sure I'm doing my tasks, mm -hmm. right? Right. Those are examples of daily things to do. I, everything I listed takes about 10 minutes. But in those 10 minutes, I correct the facility. I correct financials. I correct the chart. I correct, are we using the proper forms and scripting and intro images? And do we have an embezzlement going on or not? Are we reappointing patients? Like all of those things are checked and, and corrected because of this 10 minutes of time I've invested to do this very disciplined, regimented set of tasks. Right, right. Now, we have tasks that are weekly. We have tasks that are month monthly. We have tasks that are quarterly. Um, I can show you, for example, bear with me here. I know I'm leaving the screen, so I apologize. I love it, love it. But, you know, everyone has tasks in an office. This mm -hmm. is for dental practice. So everyone's got tasks and we need to make sure that all these tasks are done. Because mm -hmm. if they're not, we get patients saying, why did I get a bill all of a sudden? Or why didn't insurance pay? Or I can't reach you on the phone or, you know, all kinds of things happen. Right. It's, it's not rocket science. But if all we're doing is cutting teeth all day long, who the heck is looking for embezzlement or checking our collection policy? No one. Someone's right. got to run the company, right? Right, right. Well, a couple of things going on here. Number one, you're creating very solid expectations for the people that work in your practices. They know what's expected consistently, you know, because that's a big deal for dentists, the consistency factor. The second thing is, you know, I can't say enough about what you said earlier is I've heard you say this before. I go home and I sleep really well, knowing that the boxes are checked. And really, when you don't check the boxes, you're right. Your brain is over. It's, you know, you've got, it's almost like you have all this, all these open files on your computer system and there's no bandwidth up here because there's too many, you've got too many windows open on your computer thinking about the things that should be done. You know, what's a great example of what you just said. What? I bet any dentist right now thinking about what their team does for them probably has times where they say, God, it's not that hard. I mean, I could go in there and just do it better. Right. Why can't they do it? <laughs> Right. They have that. And, and, and that is a symptom of them not having any sort of training or accountability, them not checking things. Things just get out of hand. They get undisciplined. It's just like anarchy going on in, in a dental office sometimes. Right. And, you know, then when that happens, we constantly see little pieces of erosion in our company. Like that didn't get done quite the way I wanted. This didn't happen. We got this problem. Then I get, I look in my, I look at wellsfargo.com and there's not as much money as I think there should be. And I got tax bills and I got to go cut this tooth real quick though. So I don't even have time to meet with my CPA uh, to talk about the numbers and the money because I just got to cut another tooth. And so constantly all day long, I'm worried. Is this being done? Is that being done? You know, what about the money? And oh, she wants a raise. And gosh, she called in sick. And what am I going to do? And oh my God, PDS is opening a practice right next door. You know, <laughs> and it's just an immense amount of pressure. Delta is cutting their fees again. Right. And I have all these things I'm worried about that what I do is I just hide in a cave where I just get to cut teeth. Mm -hmm. And I just try to ignore everything else until. It cuts me and I'm bleeding and then I get pissed off about it and I got to address this one thing. Right. Right. By flipping this upside down and saying, I am going to just check everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it in a way that it doesn't take me very much time. That actually 
allows us to have complete open mental space because we only worry about it for a split second instead of all day long. Right. And we correct things before they become big problems. And with open mental space, we ourselves have more capacity, more ability to be a better dentist, be a better leader, be a better father, have right. time off and go home and sleep well at night because we're not worried if our consent forms are being signed or not. We know they are. So we sleep better. Yeah. It's, it's so true. I mean, spot on. So let's say, uh, and again, I'll just, I, I get all these questions, but Scott, like I've got so much on my plate. Where would I start? And then if I have this team that's been working with me for 20 years, cause I purchased this practice from another dentist and I start giving them checklists, they're going to resent this and they're going to consider it babysitting. Like, okay, give me, give me something to grab on. Where would I even start tomorrow? Because there are things I ask for in hygiene that just don't get done every day. And it makes me crazy. And then when I bring it up, they get upset. And now I got to deal with all that. So you get these questions too. I get them too. What would you say to that? Um, great, great question. So first of all, if we don't block the time in our schedule to run the company, yeah, let's just be honest. We're just going to cut teeth. Right. Right. So, so in our practices, it is mandatory that we block 30 minutes a day to run the company. And the 30 minutes are either right before the day starts or right before the afternoon starts. Mm -hmm. No, no cutting teeth, no patience. And that might sound like this huge loss of production, but I'll tell you what, what a huge loss of production is, is poor case acceptance that's not fixed and it goes on for two, three, 10 years. Yep. Poor reappointment, poor retention, poor collection policies. Like that's a huge loss, mm -hmm. not cutting another tooth. Uh, so we, we block 30 minutes a day. And in those 30 minutes, it's time for me to be the CEO, not the dentist, but the CEO, and also for my team to perform the tasks they need to perform that are very challenging to do in the middle of the battle of trying to get people in and out. So 30 minutes a day is the investment in actually having someone run the darn company. Now, the next thing you brought up is this checklist, you know, staff checklist. Well, a checklist is not belittling. I mean, pilots use a checklist, right? Because mm -hmm. if they forget to do something, we might die. <laughs> so they, we're not belittling them. We're just saying the tasks are so important that everyone in the company, including the CEO, mm -hmm. has a checklist to remind them because right. we're only human. We forget things. Then what if though, we start having our CEO time? We start doing the things we're supposed to do. We start finding problems and we address them and the team, someone in our team gets mad or someone on our team doesn't fix it. And it's constantly a problem. Mm -hmm. We get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Because without, without doing the audit, we're holding on to someone that's damaging our company. Then we do the audit and then we see they need help. They need to change. We need to train them. We need to help them. We need this fixed. Right. Most people will fix, but some still won't. Thank the Lord we found them. Right. Now we know. They might be the most bubbly person. They might put on the best show in front of us. But in reality, when it comes to actually doing the work, they might be very damaging. Right. At some point, right? We want this practice in our head, the practice of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There's a chance the people of today can't build the practice of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We hope everyone can, but sometimes we've got this person in our company that can't, is not the right person for the more successful practice because they refuse to follow proper collection policies or they refuse to reappoint patients correctly. Right. They're not the right person. So now, I don't want anyone to fire people, but let's just be upfront and honest about this conversation. Mm -hmm. If we actually start measuring people's work and effectiveness and we help them and train them the best we can and they still don't do the job, they're not the right person for the job. We got to get rid of them. Right. That's the way it is. And the other people are going to be thanking us. Like, what took you so long? We, we're <laughs> sick and tired of doing our job this whole time. Right. Right. Well, the thing I like about your approach here is this is not an emotional approach. I mean, you're giving everybody the opportunity to succeed. You're giving them the rules. 
and the data tells the truth on whether or not they succeed. And you, you could apply this principle that you've just brought to us in any company. Let's say I go to work for another company and I'm like, I don't like the way you guys do it here. I'm going to do it my own way. That only has a shelf life of so many so many days and then I'm gone. So it's important that this is just done the same way every single time. Um, the other thing too is that, and I mean this in the nicest way, what you've just said is that sometimes when you bring in new people, they don't know any other way except for the checklist. And that becomes a much smoother transition too and only accelerates growth. And if you're a dentist watching this, you already know that's the truth. You lose somebody who doesn't want to be a part of the vision, bring in somebody new and you're like, wow, this is great. Yeah, that's a great point. You know what? Most dental pra practices, you know what their training program is? I mean, you know. Right. Their, their, their official training program in their company that they're the CEO of is, welcome to our practice scheduler. Sit next to Mary. Good luck. Go. Yeah. Right? Right. If we can take the tasks that have to be performed in the practice and do something as simple as write them down on a checklist that says, do these things every day, every week, every month. We actually have a great uh, foundation for training new people. Right. Um, there's so many benefits that come to just organizing the tasks. I, 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 um, I you know, I, I kind of sometimes feel like, like, like when I was trying to lose weight and be healthy and in shape, I mean, I knew what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I, I eat right, work out, and I right. just didn't always do it um, until I finally did. And the way I did is I hired someone to make me do it until I finally did. And then I realized, holy crap, I've wasted 15 years of my life hating picking out clothes, hating going to the beach, right. hating the way I felt, right? Like I spent 15 years hating who I was and it's not that hard to do. And in a dental practice, it's even more. You talk about how my approach isn't emotional, mm -hmm. but the result is all emotional. Right. Because when we make more money, and we don't feel like a slave to our company, and we don't feel stressed like we used to, everything changes in life in a very emotional way. And it's sad that these big corporate chains can create that effect in months mm -hmm. when the dentist was chained for 20 years. Right. Because he or she was unwilling to just take some simplistic steps forward. Their mental block prevented them from taking simple steps forward. Yeah, very true. Now, um, this is fantastic. What other piece of advice would you give? Let's say I'm a young dentist and I'm just getting started. There's a couple ways I can go. I could do a scratch start. I could purchase a practice. You know, I could go and work for somebody because we're watching this. A lot of young people are watching these now and we have, and we've got a lot of young dental students watching this. Give us, if I'm going to start out my career, build a family, have a, how do I do this, Scott? What would be your suggestion so that I have a practice that I run so it doesn't run me? Any quick thoughts you have on that? Yeah, you know, new de dentists, I mean, first of all, the average income of dentists has gone down every year since 2005. Okay. So uh, it's tough. The student debt has almost tripled since 2005. Um, doc, new dentists are coming out and they got some pressures, big pressures, financial pressures. And they are fleeing to what they think is safety, working as an associate long term. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that if a new dentist wants to flee to mediocrity that they deem is safe, I think working for someone makes sense. Um, you, like being a pharmacist at Walgreens might make sense for that person. Mm -hmm. um, I hope there's a whole lot of us, though, new dentists even that don't want to be a pharmacist at Walgreens. Right. Um, I hope there's a lot of us that want to make more money in an environment we've built, we've controlled, that is catered to us, to our lifestyle, our values. And the fear can get in the way, but the reality is that there, it's not hard to make more money owning a practice compared to making less money being an associate someone. Right. It's not for everyone, but if I'm a new dentist and I'm entrepreneurial and I want to um, build a, a foundation of net worth and control of my lifestyle, even if I've got $350,000 of debt, I am going to try to own a practice as soon as possible and inundate myself 
with information. Mm -hmm. And buying a practice can make sense because of the immediate cash flow. But the problem with buying a practice is most practices for sale to a new dentist are dumpy practices and dumpy right. locations with poor profit margin. Mm -hmm. And that could be a trap. Buying a practice that doesn't make much money can be a trap. Um, starting a practice is risky if you don't know how to do it because you don't have a patient base to begin with. We've been extremely successful with startups. Our average startup is 1.8 million by year three. Um, and it's a small practice, not a big, it's a small facility, small cost, small risk. We're proud of that. Um, and our docs make a lot of money off of that. Mm -hmm. So again, it's about getting the right knowledge. Um, I believe that at the end of the day, a lack of knowledge is resulting in new dentists flocking to mediocrity due to the pressures of debt. Mm -hmm. It's a lack of knowledge. If they had the knowledge, the pressures of debt would not skew the way they look at the business world. Right. So I, I'd say a new dentist needs to gather as much business knowledge as possible so that they have the confidence to do what's maybe better for them. Right, right. And you think about this too, what you just said is brilliant because a lot of them go to the internet to look for this knowledge. You're going to find an abundance of information about how bad dentistry is and how dentistry is going away. And, you know, that can cloud a lot of your thinking. So Scott, I know we, 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 you know, we don't only, we don't get you forever. I know you have to run here pretty soon, but if I'm a young dentist watching this, or even I'm a mature dentist watching this and I'm like, gosh, I need this. I need to do this. You know, you have a whole series of things that break away. You've got different courses. You have your startup course, you have a, uh, a regular business master's course, and then you also have one for the bigger group practices. Can you describe what those are if I've never heard of Breakaway before? Yeah, sure. Um, we have two-day intense business training events. Okay. And some events are geared towards dentists that are doing startups or building, moving their practice, but doing building. So startups, some events are geared towards existing practices, and some are geared towards groups. And the events, you know, I actually, one of the books I pulled for the example, mm -hmm. uh, for the checklist, the events, I don't know if you can see it, they got lots of different topics. There's 400 pages here of exactly how we do every little thing, yeah. right? Um, so this is not some, excuse my language, bullshit seminar Right. sales pitch that you regret going to. This is a business training event. There's other companies maybe that have great events too. Um, so please understand, I think new dentists especially just need to do something. But we're very proud, of course, of our events. Mm -hmm. um, and the best way for someone to learn about us and our philosophies and our successes is to attend an event. And in two days, they'll get two years worth of business training probably. Um, it's like drinking from a fire hose. It's just a <laughs> I will completely agree with that. It is like drinking from, and it is fantastically worth it. So if you're even thinking about it, just do it. Um, and then, uh, you also, you know, if you're building a facility to, you know, Scott, you, you give great, you have great courses and great information on how to build a facility too, because that's a big, we're going to talk about this in a separate episode. You have the ability to equip an op for, I think you said 12,000 is compared to 72,000. Now you don't have to go into that right now, but you can help somebody if they're struggling with that on how do I do this? So it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg. In one day, someone will learn how to save about $300,000 building an office. That's and awesome. some of that's equipment, some of that's design, some of that's cost savings on construction. There's lots of ways you add it all up. It's at least 300 grand. Which yeah. is sad to me that the majority of the industry is burning away 300 grand. They shouldn't every time they build an office. It's almost sickening to us. Um, but yeah, one, in one day, they'll learn how to save a bunch of money. Yeah, and I'll say this firsthand. It's not by doing it the cheap way. It's just no. having a very simple, high-level approach to what your practice philosophy is. So it's good yeah. stuff.
Cool, yeah. buddy. Well, I appreciate you being on. I know, I know you got to run. We're going to have you back for so many other things. So uh, check it out, breakawaypractice.com. We're going to put a link in there. If you have questions, continue to add them to the feed. And even later on, Scott will get back to you and we'll get the right information. Scott, just stand for a second while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you, you know, uh, uh, watching. And if you found this valuable, do me a favor, hit the share button, share it with your friends because it's fantastic information. Obviously, we wanted to go to them and keep sending us suggestions for shows that you want to see, even with Scott. And I'll ask him to bring the information uh, so you guys can have it. So until we see you next time, keep watching the best practice show. You guys have a great Thanks rest of the day. Bye-bye.